Hello, hello, hello. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm an internal medicine resident, but I went to med school in Michigan. It's Michigan State University College of Medicine, but super happy to be here and so excited to meet you. I go to med school here at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, <laughs> And I'm a third year right now, so I'm in my clerkship. Wow, you're almost done. How does that feel? Feels, I mean, it feels like a lot, you know. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you're always learning something new and trying to get a grasp of what direction I want to go into. I think I thrive more when I'm able to interact with patients and kind of learn on the go and um, be able to, like, learn from doctors too. Getting to third year means you've got over that first step. How you've used AMBOSS so far in your med school journey? So AMBOSS really came like through for me in terms of like question bank and their like their knowledge database too. The, there's like okay. the knowledge up in the QBank, QBank app. But for me, I took their step one self-assessment as well. And that helped a lot because it able to, it was able to like target my weaknesses. I think it was a little bit more efficient with Amboss. I love efficiency, especially when you're trying to fit in time with family and time with friends yeah. to kind of keep you going. I think figuring out how to study in the most like efficient and effective way is so important. How did you feel, you know, you were able to incorporate Amboss with like how your school was, was operating? I didn't get introduced until like probably the second semester of my med school. I wish I would have done it earlier, but we started doing it to where, so we do it by block. So by organ system. So, okay. you know, probably like respiratory is when I started using it like heavy. And then we would get like random question sets. We would get like a big screen over in one of the medical school buildings and like bring the, the screen down and we'd all do questions together. So we'd like mm -hmm. time it and then wait for it. Each have our own answer, put it on the whiteboard talk about it and then answer it. And they're like, dang, we missed that five hammer one. Or like, yeah. no, we came the, the one hammer ones, those are gimmies. Or, all right, we got the four hammer one. We're doing good, we're doing good. Like, it was good. Especially through going through those five hammer questions. I think those slap me up and down all the time. How are you like kind of reviewing? Like if you went through a question and you got it right, what would you do? If I got it right, usually like it depends. It depends how I felt. Like if I was like very confident in it, I'd skim through the answer and then kind of like keep going forward. But like, if I was like iffy about it, I'd look more into the details and figure out, okay, I was between these two. I gotta figure out why the other one that I was thinking, but was wrong, why it wasn't, why it wasn't right. So I'd go through those choices. But then if I get one completely wrong, then I have to read through everything and kind of write down like the topics that I gotta hit again. And if I kept seeing a trend, like, okay, I keep missing this topic of, of the hepatitis serology is like, I keep missing this, I keep missing this. I'd, you know, watch a video or do whatever, do like a targeted set later. So your third year, you're doing clerkships, like have you been able to incorporate it at this stage in the game too? Oh yes, yes, a lot. Like I remember it was like my first one with internal medicine and they were- You got a lot going on. I know, and we had a lot going on, but I remember they were like trying to figure something like quick out and they couldn't remember which, uh, organism was in like this category and you know I, I brought it up and then you know brought out the table and let them read it it's like oh, okay we were we, we ordered the wrong test we gotta order this one because <laughs> it was like between group a strep versus strep pneumo i think having that on the ipad like on demand even though we didn't have the wi-fi i had downloaded the offline content that piece about having it when it's offline because you yeah. think sometimes that you can use all of these other like libraries and stuff in the hospital but if you are in like the basement or somewhere yeah. where the Wi-Fi is weak. So if you were to kind of compare how you were studying for the semester before you found Amboss, how would you kind of compare those two? I was not doing good. <laughs> like it just wasn't, you know, I wasn't studying the right way. And it took me a while to get to that point. And like, you know, every time, like, I, like you know, if a first year asks me, what should I get? What should I get? I tell them like, yo, you got to get Amboss. A lot of times they'll figure it out on their own if they don't listen that time, you know, and they'll get it like, oh, you were right. Or like, oh yeah, like <laughs> this is definitely like a, a cheat code kind of way. When you started med school, I think a lot of the analogies that folks use is like this fire hydrant. It's spewing out water and you're trying to catch all the drops and you literally just can't. And I really feel like that's the way it was you know, in terms of resources, like there's mm -hmm. so many resources, there's so many textbooks. Yeah, I would agree. It was like a fire hydrant with everything, yeah. knowledge and resources. I got this photo 
of you and your boys. I would love to hear why this photo is like important to you. What makes this special? So this photo is super important to me because like, you know, I think there's not a lot of um, minority men in the field. And I would think, you know, coming to UNC, you know, that like we kind of were drawn to each other um, just because we want to kind of make that change going forward for like physicians in the future. And like, I think yeah. we all had similar backgrounds, similar stories and kind of similar struggles too of being a minority male. And, um, you know, everyone in that picture, we're all really good friends. We, we got each other's backs, you know, we, we got like group texts going on. We always like try to meet up when we can. Just having someone that can relate to you like that is like really special to have. One of the important things to talk about whenever we talk about medicine and the medical journey is making sure you have support and and making sure that you understand what your why is and what your, what your passions are within the field because it's so broad. Mm -hmm. So I love, love, love and totally connect with you on the fact that, you know, we need more diversity in medicine, especially male um, minority men in medicine so that more of like our underserved and marginalized communities can see folks that look like them mm -hmm. um, taking care of them. And, and right. I think it can help to just address a lot of like the cultural, I think, barriers that comes with pursuing care. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a lot of people that just stay at home sick because they don't think that anybody would really care for them if they were to go to the hospital. So. I think I thought that picture was beautiful and powerful. And so thank you so much for sharing that with us.